か。Sorry, it's not a GTI episode, but those are coming soon. Today, we're back on the Ferrari 360 project. This is the fourth video of the series. If you're not familiar with it, I bought what I believe to be the world's cheapest clean title running and driving Ferrari 360. I tell you the price I bought it for in the first video, so go check it out if you missed it. I know it's a big claim, but I can't find anything even remotely close to what I paid for this thing. And if you think you could, post in the comments below because honestly, I'd probably just go buy it. But this thing needs a ton of work. We're gonna get to it. First, we're gonna do a bunch of mods because I wanna make this thing cooler and more mine. So I could be motivated to do all the boring stuff. And yes, I know how stupid that is. Whatever, I wanna make this thing more fun before fixing little things to make it incrementally better. The interior on the 360 is toasted, but I don't have any of the parts to do everything I wanna to do to it. But I do have one thing that I saved from the RX-7 that changes every car dramatically for me, being a taller guy. And it's seats. These are my Recaro pole position Abe's that I actually took out of the RX-7. I had just gotten these for the car and I wasn't willing to sell them with the car. But to be honest, I think they kind of look more like Euro car seats. When I had the RX-7, I was actually planning on changing out the inserts to a new retro pattern that they were coming out with. This houndstooth Pepita print, I think really fits the Euro car and will look great in the Ferrari, especially when we convert the rest of the interior away from the crema. Fitting seats in cars usually sucks, but from what little information I can find on Ferrari forums, it sounds like the side mounts for the Recaros will drop right into the OEM positioning on this. Removing the stock seats is always super easy because they're usually on sliders, which means you could get to all the bolts very simply. It also means you get to reveal what's underneath. Lovely. After losing 60 pounds by swapping the exhaust, we might as well weigh the seats and see how much we're gonna lose there. I'm an idiot and I can't actually do math like that on the fly. It turns out each seat saves 33.2 pounds, which is pretty sick. Times that by two and we're over 120 pounds dropped on this car between the seats and the exhaust. That's pretty sick. I still gotta figure out how to put these things in because I didn't buy any bracketry because I read that the factory side mounts pop right in, which isn't really the case because I'm a bit taller, so I need to be further back. I think I can figure it out. Let's go run down to the shop and I guess we'll mount some tires while we're down there and pick up some more brackets that we're gonna steal out of the yellow car. This is pretty embarrassing, but I came down to the shop because I had to pillage parts for the Ferrari off of this thing. This is all we needed. I just had to grab the seat bracket out of the yellow car because we need these side mounts to fit up the other seats. And while we're down here, I figured we should mount up the tires on the new wheels I have for the Ferrari because our suspension's coming in tomorrow, I hope, and we're gonna make some changes on this car. And you guys know me by now, so you know my taste in wheels. We got a set of EBS LMs in gold. My reasoning for getting these wheels is because I want to get a set of really JDM wheels, but I couldn't find them and I wasn't quite ready to do it yet with the car, how it's going to look right now. So I figured LMs are an easy resell because Ferrari people will buy BBS LMs. The wheels I want to get, once I put them on the car, they're pretty much mine forever. There's no one else with a Ferrari is going to run them. Let's get some tires on these things. And this is a Yokohama AO52. It is one of the fastest 200 treadwear tires and I love the way they look. They're also super light. We're gonna be mounting this 275.40 on an 18 by 10. And then in the front, we have 18 by nines that are gonna have a 245.40. Sometimes you need more help on your project than your best friend. And luckily, today's sponsor is Tinker. It allows you to work with automotive experts instantly via live video chat. Get quick answers to all car questions, which is immensely helpful because a lot of times when you're working on stuff, digging through the internet endlessly to find your answers could be super annoying. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a brand new entry DIY mechanic, save time, effort, money, and most importantly, the headache of dealing with automotive unknowns with the Tinker app. 
It's available in the Apple App Store. Now, let's get back to the episode. Hell yeah, I love this. The 27540 is super meaty, but not too big. It has a really great flat sidewall. I love the look of the sidewall on these tires, and these things look rad. I do have the center caps at home, so we'll pop those on before we put them on the car. I got three more to do, and then we're gonna load these things up, get back home, toss the suspension on the car, crap, and the seats. And then we'll finally get some payoff on this. I was about to leave and then I thought, hmm, my green car here has the seats out of it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. These may actually work. These garagistic floor mounts are adjustable. Exactly what I need. So I'm gonna pull these out of this car and I'm gonna bring them home with me and see if I can use these E36 floor mounts in the 360. So we've got just about every single type of seat mount situation here, starting with the FDRX7 seat rails, which I'll explain why I thought those were gonna work. We've got the Recaro side mounts. We've got some garagistic side mounts and E36, E46 brackets and a universal pair slider. And the internet wasn't lying. There is a pretty basic setup here that you can drop seat rails into because they're just straight and flat. So I actually thought that these may work because it has the same drop in the front and a flat rear. So I was considering that maybe this would work, but it's a bit long. But I was also thinking that could bolt in and then we can drill a hole here and bolt that in. It's not quite working the way I want it to and the seat actually sits pretty high here. So we're gonna move on. The internet was right. Seat rails kind of just work. The garageistic rails pretty much bolt right in and fit great. And they look pretty good. Honestly, it makes the tan interior look even less gross. And it's really nice because I've got a ton of headroom. It's got good lean back, good pedal positioning. Like this is perfect. It really makes the car feel so much better. So now all we got to do is get the passenger seat in and it's always easier the second time around. This thing went in in like five minutes. And now this guy literally sat in his car until I was done because he was afraid that I would ask him for help. You watched me from your car <laughs> until I finished and then you got out. I Go learned, home. I learned this you got it. Go home. I don't want you here. <laughs> your vlog setup is crazy. Let me see no you. way. Dude, how are the seats? You don't even need to manual swap anymore. I think your car is complete now. All right, let's wrap this uh, the series up. Hell yeah. <laughs> Can you not? Every time this guy gets in my car, he has to press all the buttons until he breaks something. Remember in the FD, you had to break my no, center console. No, 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 the FD was not my fault. No, listen to it. And like, look at the travel. Like, look at how it looks for you. Oh, without the without the wide. Like, this is what normal life looks like. I... Can you get rid of that? Oh no, what is that? I mean, honestly, it's not much worse. Ew, is that just the roof? I think you should get rid of this somehow and rock like Scotto's 911 roof. Bare roof. It smells bad too. <laughs> oh my God, you gotta come look at this. <laughs> Imagine you were looking at a Ferrari and then you figured out that the headliner is cardboard. No way! With someone's billing address on it. This is a headliner in a Ferrari? Oh. <laughs> Get out of here! Amy! Check this out. I pulled the headliner out of my Ferrari. This is the headliner out of the Ferrari. Oh, okay. Did it just pop off? Oh my god. FedEx <laughs> <laughs> home delivery. It feels wet. Wait, I'm gonna put garbage bags down and then I'll scrape it off. I am excited for these. Dang. These are the Nitron R3 dampers. I know the Ferrari 360 has coilovers from the factory, meaning adjustable ride height, but that's not everything. These things are meant to go as low as we want. And also now we have rebound and compression adjustment as well as some fancy reservoirs. But I'll get into more of that later. Let's go put them in. Got the car up on the lift. We're just gonna start throwing these dampers in and it looks pretty easy. It is a double A-arm suspension and it looks like we just gotta pop these two bolts off, the sway bar off and that bolt and it should come out pretty easy. Should. Down here, you have this bolt that goes through the strut is into the sway bar. It's actually two piece. So the sway bar bolt right here backs, if you could see that, it backs out of the main bolt. So the main bolt stays static, this bolts in. So you unthread this, 
sway bar end like here, and then you undo the bolt. It's ridiculous, I've never seen that before. How long could this bolt possibly be? Because I am still spinning this thing out and I feel like it's just maxing out the sway bar end link, but it's not coming out. How long are you? And also I'm learning a pattern about Ferrari is that they don't want you to use power tools. They like you to use wrenches. Like it's like 1970 something. Do the newer ones. For any of you guys out there who've worked on the newer ones, can you use impact guns? Cause that's all I wanna know. I will sell this thing and buy a four or five eight if I could use an impact gun on everything. <laughs> so I've been really excited to get these because Nitron is a company I always looked after because this is the brand that you see on all of those Shermer BMW ring tools. If you don't know what those are, they're pretty much the coolest BMW M3s that run the Nürburgring. And Nitron is opening up a distribution center in the United States and it's right here in Southern California. So when I found that out, I really wanted to get a set of these to try them out. So I'm super stoked to get the chance to put them on the 360. So first step to putting these on is figuring out ride height. I don't really know, but it looks quite a bit shorter. So I'm gonna go with factory spec here. I'm gonna measure these and make sure that they are all even. And we're gonna put them on just like that. And then worst case scenario, we can just bottom them out. This already looks quite a bit shorter and you gotta compensate for this helper spring here will compress down to pretty much nothing. So it's looking like it'll give us about a three inch drop as it is. That sounds just about perfect because I think we want to lower it probably like three inches, which I know most of the Ferrari people out there are going to be really annoyed at because it's going to ruin the suspension geometry or whatever. But honestly, this thing sits so high from the factory that we got to change that. That was honestly incredibly easy. Luckily, the rear is almost exactly the same as the front, so we just gotta do the other three corners. It's actually easier in the rear than it is the front. You can get an impact gun on that thing, so we don't have to twist the sway bar out like a goddamn pilgrim using a wrench. We can blast this thing off with an impact gun. I'll have this off in like 25 seconds. Like a goddamn racing. The rear damper actually has the reservoir attached to the damper because of less clearance. I thought it was an external reservoir where it had a line because I thought it'd be kind of cool to mount it in the engine bay, but that's just racer me talking. This thing looks beautiful. It's also significantly lighter than the OEM damper, which is pretty cool, probably due to this way smaller spring. That was honestly the easiest suspension install I've ever done. And now it's time to install Nissan 240SX fitment wheels onto my Ferrari 360. Almost identical to the wheels that I ran on my S14 1J build back in the day. OEM rear wheel, 51.5. BBS wheel, 49.7. OEM front wheel, 40.9. BBS front wheel with a much bigger front tire. Yeah, that's where we're gonna lose. 47.2, which basically gets us here. Exhaust, we lost 60. Seats, we lost 66. Shocks, we lost 24 for a total of 150.4. The wheels actually gained back 9.2 pounds total. That's all four because the rears were lighter because the OEM Ferrari wheel and tire package is exactly the same as the BBS. However, the front wheel, we're going with a wider wheel and a wider tire, so it's gonna be heavier, but whatever. It'll look cool, so it doesn't matter. All right, last bit. Went to go see the homies at Motorsport Hardware to get a stud conversion for this. These are M14 by 1.5 stud conversion and lugs because these Ferrari lugs are insane and they have a really long shank and the head is too big, so these would not work with the OEM wheels. We're gonna swap over to studs because it's a lot nicer anyways, and we need to run a spacer in the front. So let's pop these on. Ah, I've been looking forward to this since I got the car. Do not really identify with the 360 in its stock form, in this color, stock ride height, stock wheels, like something about it just screams like old man to me. This isn't the final form at all. This is not the end of the road. I want to continue to develop this car and make it look a lot different. But for now, I am so excited. So we also had to get some hub centric rings because like I said, these are S14 spec wheels and the hub bore is 80 millimeter and the 360 is 67.1. So we're gonna fit those up. Ooh, ha, 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 ha. 
I made such an idiot move. So I had to get these wheels drilled because this car is 5x108, not 5x114.3. And the rear offset, not friendly for a spacer. Perfect, or I hope as is. And I didn't realize that the rear brake could be an issue. It is so close. There's no clearance. There's probably a credit card's worth of clearance. So it works, but man, did I luck out because if that hit the caliper and I had to run a spacer, this would be it, be a wrap. You know, I never really thought that I would have a Ferrari caliper behind a BBS wheel in my own garage. This is incredible. I'm so stoked. We got to get this front wheel on and we got to put this thing down on the ground so we can see what it looks like. Oh my Lord. Ah, I'm so excited. Let's lower this thing down and see how it looks. Is it sick? Woo! That is, oh! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Oh my God! Okay, first drive went well. The dampers ride great, but like any wheel fitment journey, we've got some problems. A little damage coming in the driveway here where we pulled out the fender because it's coming in contact with the tire. So the other side, fender's really chewing up the tire pretty bad. We've got a lot of rubber up in here and it's kind of ripping up the tire pretty bad. And you can see we got some rubber just kind of caked up in here. A couple things, we're gonna raise it, two threads. I'm gonna cut some of the fenders and roll them and work a little bit of magic just so we could drive this thing and not ruin it. But God damn, it looks good. We got a little bit of a rub right here on the fender lip. And rather than rolling this, because it gets pretty tight here, and basically if the fender is like this, you can roll it tight. But if there's not enough and the lip is very small, you can't actually fold it over. So what I find is best in that situation is to cut it and shave it down. And yeah, I know this seems like a horrible idea or it's really scary, but if you're even somewhat competent with one of these and have just a little bit of patience, I have like none. You can do this and it's way easier than rolling your fenders, I promise. So basically all you wanna do is not stay in the same place for too long and kind of run it back and forth nice and smooth without heating up the panel too much with a paint bubble. All right, so the front's gonna be a bit trickier because we're not gonna just cut this because we got the fender liner here, which you'd have to trim and I don't really wanna deal with it. It pulled the fender out here a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up and then we're gonna gently tap it in with a rubber mallet and then anything left that's like a harsh edge, will grind out. The key to doing this is you don't wanna just like boil the paint in one second. So you wanna get the paint warm so it's a bit more flexible, but you don't wanna cook it to the point where we're gonna bubble the paint. So use the medium heat and just kind of work the area until it's nice and warm, pretty much like warm to a touch. You don't wanna burn yourself, but it needs to be pretty hot. We'll get this up to temp and then we're literally just gonna smash it with a hammer. The problem is, is there's a lot of backing behind this fender, so it's not actually gonna roll up the way we intend. I think I would have to pull the fender liner out, trim that up, but I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just kind of grinding this edge down here that's all the way out that's grabbing the tire. I saw the one thing that was actually ripping the tire and it wasn't the fender. There's this little bracket back here. It looks like it's something that holds the bumper on. So we're gonna grind that thing down, probably take like an inch off of it and that should stop the other side that's ripping the tire up. So see, it used to be sort of tucking. Now there's like just a slight gap. Same here. This was once kind of tucking. Now it's just like right at the top of the tire. Yeah, I know. I like when it's kind of tucking tire all around, but honestly, I really like driving my cars more than I like looking at them. And it was a little too cars and coffee hot boy for me. And I don't think it would actually be that functional to go like rip toge roads and canyons and all that. So yeah, it looks good. Let's go shoot this thing. We got some events we're gonna hit. I uh, got Jolly coming over in a couple minutes. We're gonna go to downtown and uh, get some cool shots of this thing.
messed up the fender once, went home, raised the car, cut the fender, and then we still got it. But I bent it back with a, uh, breaker, bar? With a breaker bar. So it looks okay, but it's gonna do it again. But honestly, this thing rides really good with yeah. this new suspension. It's sick. I'm so hyped on how this thing came out. You gotta push the limits on your wheel fitment and things like this are gonna happen. So if your car is absolutely cherry and you don't want to risk anything, you gotta play it a little safer, keep your car a little bit higher, or like properly roll your fenders and do everything before you drive it. But luckily this car is not perfect and we're gonna paint it or wrap it soon anyway, so who cares? I'm stoked how this thing came out, blown away. I can't even believe it's the same car. I finally feel comfortable driving it. This is nowhere near done. We still got a lot left to do on this car. We got transmission swap, we got interior swap, we got paint, bodywork, whatever the hell we're gonna do. This is only like phase one, so stick around for the rest of the build. Thanks everyone for watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. New video every Thursday. Thanks for watching, I'm out. Thank you.